In this video, we'll add some detail to um, the two views on the right. So we, we built some trusses, but we didn't really kind of complete um, how they would actually be constructed or illustrate how they would be constructed. You'll see on these images here um, with these trusses, there are these plates and they um, happen wherever you have two pieces of, of wood that are meeting. So we'll add some detail to our truss to kind of mimic what these plates might, might look like. So in Revit, I'm going to go to the view right here, the one that shows the truss from the side. And that is a section drawing and large section of structure two. Okay, and I'll zoom in here a little closer. Now we're gonna just use um, regions to kind of illustrate where these plates might be located. So if you go to annotate, and you go to region. Um, the last one we made was the steel, a region using the steel pattern. We want to make this one solid white. And we are going to change our line type here to thin lines. I'm going to use a rectangle. And you'll see it's it's going to snap to the center line. And I, I just want to choose a point somewhere in this vicinity. And I'll come in a little bit again, I'm trying to make it somewhat symmetrical here. Maybe I'll get a little bit more contact with that upper part by pulling that up a little ways and then I'll hit the check mark. Okay. And then I'll move on to the next, the next one. Okay, to construct this one, I'm going to need to make some temporary lines. Um, maybe I'll make them, I'll, I can leave them as this hidden because we're going to erase them. Um, I'm going to start at this end point and maybe I'll go down about five inches or so. Then I'll draw another line from here. Now to get it perpendicular to the edge here, you can right click go to snap overrides like perpendicular and it will allow you to extend that and bring it over here. All right, now I'm ready to go to the region tool and this will be set to thin lines again. And I, for this one, I can't use the rectangle because I'm at this funny angle. I'm gonna make one line there, make another line here. Connect those two. One more line here. Um, and then hit the check mark. Okay, and you can erase the two hidden lines that were used for constructing the rectangle. Now on to the next one. Okay, for this one, I'm going to go to detail line again, or no, not detail line. I want to do this again as a region. And I'll click on the rectangle tool this time. I'm going to snap, you know, find a place where you get some good coverage there and then try to make it symmetrical with the check mark. And one more, this one right here. I go to the region tool. This one will be a rectangle. I'll start it somewhere in here and bring it to about that point, hit check mark. And now we have at least some of those gaps filled. Go take a look at the sheet. Okay. Now we can begin to add a few notes. Um, they won't be extensive, but just identifying some of these framing members. So I'm going to go back to that same detail. This is the section, the enlarged section. Okay, some of these datums need to be eliminated. Uh, we don't need level three. So I'm going to hide this one in the view. 
this one here. I don't need that one. Okay, I don't need this one either. But I do need the subfloor level one, subfloor level two. Okay. Now, actually, when we go to the elevation detail, we may be able to utilize the same lines. So I'm going to leave the lines, but I'm going to turn off the actual references in this section. So we'll, we'll line up the two details so I don't need to show that. So I'm just going to uncheck these, uncheck, uncheck. And this one could be eliminated altogether. Now, one thing I noticed um, when I started to put together the sheet is I had made a change to the foundation wall for structure one, adding this whole layer of um, furring and insulation. And in the case of a structure like this one, we wouldn't insulate this crawl space. The insulation would be in here. Now we're not going to show all of that, but I do may need to make the correction for this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to click on here, edit type. And just to clarify this, the one that's existing, I'm going to rename this one. Um, bird wall, just to clarify that that one is out there. Okay, and say, okay, so now this one says bird wall, and then I'm going to go back to edit type, and I'm going to duplicate it, and this, the copy, I'm going to eliminate the bird wall, say, okay, edit, and I'm going to remove some of these unnecessary layers. I don't need the finish layer. I don't need this structural layer or this one and say, okay, apply and okay. Okay, so that's, that's how that detail should look. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and make the change to some of the other locations. So I'm gonna go to section through structure, look, structure two, looking west, and I'm gonna update this one to be the correct retaining wall type or foundation wall type. And then I'll go to my long section and I'll do that too. So there they are. Okay, now the, the walls for the other, those are the ones that have the furred wall. Okay, so let's go back to our enlarged section of structure two. That's all looking very good. And now we can begin to add some notes. But I'll go ahead and complete what I was doing. So that should turn off. It looks like there's, there's two on top of one another. That's why it didn't. And this one here, turn that one off too. And I'm going to pull this in a little bit. Um, there we go. All right, now I'll start adding the notes. I've gone and added a few notes, and I'll go into a little bit more detail with that in a little bit. But I do want to make a, a setting change here. Um, this is the topographic surface, and I want to see if we can't create some transparency there. Apply and okay. Yeah, it seems a little heavy. So I'm going to do that with the various sections of um, topography that show up in this in these views. So again, I'm going to click on it, uh, right click on it, um, go to override graphics. And just so I get them all the same, I'll set them to maybe 70% for the transparency so that we can see a little bit more detail through it. I'll see if I can somehow grab the topography. Yeah, 
little tricky to get it. You got to tab through it till you can select it. Right click, override graphics by element, and let's lighten up that the density of that so we, we can see a little bit more through it. Um, okay, so it's showing here the concrete footing because I made that transparent. And maybe that's okay, but it is also a little heavy. So, you know, normally as we had done before, you show something that's beyond with a hidden line type, but because we're using these colors to sort of illustrate this whole assembly, this is a little bit different, um, but I am going to lighten them, lighten it to, let's try the same amount, okay. It's still, I think that maybe you're not able to boost it up a little higher. Yeah, I don't think it's having any impact whatsoever. Um, maybe because of the, the transparency settings. The only way to do this really properly would be to hide it. And I'm going to take some time, just a moment to, to do that. I'm going to make this a hidden line type. I'm going to trace it, at least the two sides here. Then I'm going to right click on it, hide it in view. And it looks like it's not even let me do that. Oh, it did. OK. So here we have a hidden line type. Do we have any other hidden line types? Hidden medium, maybe? Yeah, that's a little better. It reads through the. And then I'll finish this one off. Change that. Oops, not that. I want to click on it and I want to change it to medium. All right now, the, the tube here would also go down. So let's add a couple of detail lines to represent that happening. Medium. We'll leave that one as the light one because I'm losing that space or the space between the dashes when I jump it up to the other one. All right, so that's that's a pretty good illustration of what's happening there. And I'll go ahead, finish the notes, and then I'll explain what we're noting and um, finish the leaders. Okay, notes are in. Um, I do want to change one setting. Um, it's like my change has already taken place. So let me show you what you need to do for this. So the this stud was based on a column. Um, we kind of are making use of something that's not necessarily the intended use. So when I go to manage here and go down to um, structural column, expand that. I think. Um, it says for the cut, it's got a four here, and it's making those columns read a little bit too heavy, or the studs a little too heavy. So I'm dropping it down to two, and I'm gonna apply that change so that this is a little bit lighter. Okay, so starting from the upper right, we're gonna call out the wood truss, the double top plate. We're going to identify the studs as two by sixes at 16 inches on center. We're gonna call out Three quarter inch plywood subfloor, sole plate, rim board. You know, a lot of times in a, a wall section, you don't need to identify these, but this gives us an opportunity to just kind of go back through some of the terms we were working on through the semester. Um, double top plate, four inch uh, TJIs. Um, coming down here a little bit, a lot of what's happening here is the same as up here. So a note that just says see similar notes at level two. Um, the only addition is this pressure treated sill plate. And just keep in mind that this one needs to be pressure treated because of that contact with the concrete that sometimes can be moist. All right, moving over to the middle here. Uh, we're gonna call out the double top plate two by four studs at 16 inches on center, um, a sole plate, 
and this parallel strand lumber member. And this is one that we had downloaded and it has a very specific size. So we're gonna add that. We have a steel tube that's sitting on this concrete footing. Okay, now last step for this, and actually I noticed that there's another datum up here. I'm going to right click on it and hide that element in the view. Um, we really should have the little X symbols that indicate continuous lumber. So I'm going to go through that process right now and add those um, anywhere. We have these cross sections of, of wood members. So I'll do this under annotate detail line. And we want to make these thin lines. So I'll go ahead and add those. Here's the first one, and you may be able to, if I hold down control, pick the two and use the copy command to kind of make this go a little faster. Holding down the pan button, oops, one here. Come back and get those rim joists. So I added it to the rim joist, and I'm going to add another note to where the TJI is. I'm going to say bridging as required. So when you have these long spans, you need to provide bridging at intermediate points. And there really should be another line here that shows that one is overlapping the other. I'll go ahead and add a detail line in there, just to sort of show that condition. Uh, so the rim board has the X now, and I'll add one to the rim board down here. Difficult to grab that corner there, there we go. And one more. And then I'll repeat this for the, the center load bearing wall. Now keep in mind that we used a two by four stud wall here. And the reason that we didn't put a two by four wall on the perimeter is that we wanna get some extra insulation. Um, so it's not that we need the two by six for structural reasons, but it's really just to, to get better R value out of the wall. Okay, so now I have it in the PSL, the sole plate, and the double top plate. So this detail has all of the components necessary now. So I'm going to go to the elevation drawing and add a few more of the notes there. Structure elevation detail. Okay, and I'd hoped that I could kind of cut and paste the um, the notes in here, but it's not letting me do that. So unfortunately, you know, you might try to find a way to do that, but um, you may have to do all the notes uh, again. There won't be quite as many on this one. Item view, I'm gonna get rid of that one. That one can stay. I'm gonna get rid of the decking here, the decking level. We're going to get rid of the one that says top of slab. Get rid of this one. Okay, same thing with this topography. I'm going to override the graphics and bring it down to 70% transparency. A little bit better. Okay, um, it's weird that it's kind of, has uh, two tones of this brown color. Something must be kind of in the background. I'm going to, I showed you previously how to indicate hidden lines behind items, what you need to do for this is to go to a wireframe, um, go to view, show hidden lines, 
indicate what you want to show them behind, and then pick those elements, this one and this one. Then go to back to the visual style, shaded lines, and let's see, did it capture that? It did, it's not the easiest to read, but it is there. Now, I'm just wondering if there's not some other um, layer or something that's causing this double appearance of the brown on top of other brown. So let's see what happens when I hide that in the view. The whole thing goes, so it's, I'm not sure that we'll be able to sort of resolve that problem. Let's continue on with our, our notes. I'm going to click on this and bring it over a little bit. We probably need to bring the level datums in. That should give us enough room for the notes. Okay, I've put the notes in place. We're going to pull out the wood truss, double top plate. Let's make this plural wood trusses double top plate, two by six studs at 16 inches on center, the sole plate, the plywood subfloor, which is just below that sole plate, rim board. Again, a note that says, see similar notes at level two. And we're gonna call out that pressure treated sill plate. Okay, now let's go back to the sheet, structure two, and the only remaining parts for this are just to kind of reconfigure things, shift them around a little bit so we have alignments and we'll turn off cropping windows and things like that. Um, it's a little bit tight in here. I'm going to click on this detail and use my arrow keys to shift it over a little bit. Um, I want to, okay, I'm going to go back to this one and get rid of this datum and maybe bring that crop window up a little bit. So let's go up here to elevation detail. This one is going to be hidden in the view and this one is as well. I'm gonna click on this and bring it up. You may have to do this on the sheet too to get them You'll want to make sure that this runs all the way across since I turned off the datums for the one on the left. We need to make sure that there's consistency across there. Okay, and then what I can do, let's check. We'll double click on that. I can bring this down a little bit. It's a little higher than, than the A over here. Double click outside of it to get out of that editing mode. Then let's bring these detail titles up. Try to align them across using the arrow keys here. Click on the detail itself to bring the tail in. There was a cat meowing. I'm going to go back here and click on that title and move it over. Click on the detail to bring the tail in. You'll notice that my column lines are crossing the graphics here, so I will go back to those and make that Correction, click on this, bring it up almost to the top there or to the right at the bottom. Same thing here, click on it, bring it up. So it just hangs down a little bit. Go back to the sheet. All right, that's pretty good. And then I'm just going to go back to those views and turn off the cropping window. Okay. 
March section, turn that one off too. All right, now, last thing, I want to just go through these views and make a few adjustments so they look a little bit more orderly. I'm gonna click on one. I've got some extra space in here, both above and below. So I'm gonna click on the image, go to size, crop. I'll keep the scale as it is, but I'm gonna change this to eight inches. Let's see how that looks. See if I can make all of them eight inches, keep the scale. Shift it over there a little bit and I'll have to move the titles as well. But let's click on one more size, crop eight inches. Oops, let's undo that and make sure that the proportions Remain the same, eight inches. And move that one over. Yeah, shift it fine. Um, I'm gonna click on the title here. Try to be consistent about its location directly below. Click on the image, bring the tail over to align with the image. Oh, you know, I. Realize I should have done something differently. Um, I'm gonna, you know, you typically want to keep level one at the bottom, level two at the top. Just makes sense. People kind of associate those relationships when you're looking at the drawing. So I'm gonna flip these so that this one is above. Level two should be above level one. Click on the title. I'll get that in there. It's hard to free the title from the image. Click on the detail here. Drag this over. One more. Just trying to get it so I can drink, grab that tail, move it over. And then I want all of these images to align nicely and let me almost probably could bring in some guidelines and align them but I think that's pretty good I'm going to move them all up a little bit so that the one at the bottom more or less aligns with the title the next one okay now, now they're on sequence. And so um, if I click on this view, detail number three, I'm gonna change it to six temporarily because it won't let me rename something to something that already exists. I'm gonna click on this one. This one is gonna become two or rather three. And then I'll go back and change that six to two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, let's equally space these as much as we can. And that should do it for this sheet.